Okay, this project is for Wesley and it's a car. So let's get started. Take a piece of mixed media paper, go ahead and tape it down. We're going to start our drawing using our cyan colored pencil. And I'm looking at a reference image that I found of a car and you can see that there's this really interesting layered look that I'm going to try to achieve using um, oil pastels and a scribble technique on top. So the first thing that we wanna do is to plan out the car. The overall proportions of the car is that it's almost as wide as our paper. So I'm just going to give myself a little idea of the back and the, the front. And I'm coming off of my tape by less than a finger width because I'm really trying to fill the space. Now the car itself is, um, I'm going to have a front fender that kind of comes up, curves up, and then kind of comes over, and comes up just a little bit. This is the front windshield, and then swoops this long, broad swoop down and the back end is a little bit lower than the front so on my sketch it's going to be a little bit lower than the front and it's going to come back to meet the guideline something like that the side of the car is coming up the back window and the front window are meeting such that the front window is about twice, almost twice as wide as the back window. something like that. It's okay if yours isn't perfect. It's all right. This is a not a technical study. It's just an image of a car. That back tire is round, but like an object that is literally uh, actually round, like my piece my tape here. If you angle it, the more that you angle it, the more it appears to be an oval. Even though it's actually round, perspective creates the image or the illusion that it looks like an oval. And that's such a great thing to remember as an artist because we're creating an illusion. So instead of having a round tire back here, we're going to have an oval tire. You can see in the reference image instead of having a round, perfectly round tire, it's actually an oval. So it is actually um, sticking out away from the car, which in perspective means that it's going to be the furthest part out and it's going to be an oval. Just take your time making that shape. It can be hard to make uh, something that looks like an oval so you can always erase draw lightly and then the underside of that tire because it's uh, in perspective there's kind of 
three dimensions to it would be a line coming over from the very bottom point of that oval, the very bottom point of that oval, and then a little um, part of the back side of the tire that's showing. And that fender is coming up and over our tire so that it looks like the tire is sticking out just a little bit. And then that fender is going to cut, cut across. And the tire that is closest to the viewer is also going to be oval because it is also on this side of the car. So it's going to appear to be taller than it is wide because of the laws of perspective. Also because of perspective, it is going to appear to be bigger because it is closer to the viewer. So we're going to put this so that it is, if this is the halfway point, between the front and the back of the car, we're going to push that tire a little bit toward the back. So the middle of that oval is going to be about here. And it's going to appear to be bigger. So it's going to appear to be in this position if we make little guidelines off of the back tire and off of the front tire in this perspective and it's going to appear to be bigger and again just kind of do it real lightly so that you can make lots of gentle light lines and not dent your paper and be able to erase every at the bottom of that circle you come across and again, because of the laws of perspective, it's going to feel like this tire is bigger because it's closer to the viewer and it's going to appear to be wider because it's closer to the viewer. And then we'll go ahead and find the fender as it comes up and over the tire is actually going to be closer to the front a bigger space in back curve down and then come across so this is the front of our car so we'll come across and gently go And then the third tire that we see is actually on the other side of the car over here. And we really just see the bottom of it. It's just, we just see this curve here, this line here, and then this part of our tire. So it's like a copy of this, only it's over here and we just see the part of it that's sticking out underneath the car. So we can go ahead and put in the sense of the front fender. This car has gentle curves on it, so um, the front um, fender is going to do a lot to help us see the shape of the car. Get this going down just a little bit more, just a little bit to exaggerate that. Perspective. All right, so we're going to put this fender in and it's going to hug the right side of the car. It's going to come up and it's going to, it's almost like, almost like a smiley face. And again, if we're thinking about perspective, then whatever's furthest away, this corner is furthest away, so it's actually going to be a little smaller and a little bigger over here. And just like we have a bump for the wheel well on this side, we're going to have a little bump for the wheel well on this side that's 
and decorate it into a car. And we'll go ahead and block out the lights there on the corner and they kind of wrap around the corner so they kind of do this shape. There's kind of like the front and then the side light and it kind of wraps around. I don't know what this piece is on the car. Let's go ahead and like uh, block in this. I don't know what this is. I mean, I know what this is, but I don't know what it's called. It's like a little raised part um, on the front hood. Um, And that's gonna, this is tricky because we're trying to um, have a pretty complicated shape, which is the whole car with these individual shapes that help us understand the top and the front and the side and a very complicated angle. So if this is tough for you, just know that this is uh, definitely a more advanced drawing. Now let's find the center of our wheels and we'll just um, indicate those so that it fits in here and again that's an oval and if you were to draw an X it would be right in the middle or a T I guess right in the middle of that and then the same thing back here if you were to draw from your tallest point um, and then also from your sides, then your wheel um, would be right in there. So this is our basic shape. Um, take some time to erase and redraw as much as you want, because when we go to the next step, it's going to be harder to make changes. Okay. So I feel like <clears throat> red makes all cars look faster. <laughs> I know that that's not to the truth, but I'm sticking with it. So let's get out our red. And also let's get out um, a couple of oranges and maybe some yellows. We're gonna make this a warm car. Um, the, let's see, there seems to like there's another red here and we will want to have some dark blues for um, our windshield and maybe some light blue from our sky blue and then our black for, because there's definitely some black accents and there's definitely some white accents so take out your white too if, like me, your white looks a mess, then take a minute and wipe it down. So we are going to focus on the car and leave the background for right now. So we're just going to lay down some color on the car. Now, if I was, uh, if I looked at this and I knew that it was a red car, um, one thing to keep in mind is that you could color the whole thing red and that would be great, but look at this. I found some examples of red cars and even though the whole thing is red, you can see where it's darker red or lighter red, the value of the red indicates how the light is hitting the car. Here's another example, how the value, the, the lightness or the darkness, value has to do with light and dark. So where it's bright is where the sunlight is hitting it and when it, where it's dark red, it's still red. It's just that the light is not hitting it. Maybe it's in shadow or maybe it's in shade. And the same thing with our example image. In this case, the uh, where the light is hitting it the sun is so bright 
it actually like creates this very long highlight that has no color in it. And then this is, maybe it's a red, there's definitely some orange accents. We're going to play the red a little bit more, but you can see that there's dark and light reds or oranges. Um, and so we're going to kind of go with that idea. So we're going to take our reddest red. So this is going to be up in this area. I'm trying to kind of preserve my drawing so that I don't uh, lose it completely. Okay, so I'm putting my red down on my front fender and I'm going to come down here for the whole front. So in this case, we're doing a base coat. A base coat is when you just uh, layer on one color over the entire base, knowing that you're going to do some color on top of it. And I'm going to um, take this up and over, not over my wheel, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of white above my wheel. I'm going to bring this red down and around and try to make that sense of a white highlight that's so bright where the light is so bright. I'm also going to come in here and add more red down here at the bottom. I'm going to add red here at the top, up and over, and up just a little bit uh, on the top. I think I might bring this up a little higher. Okay, so that's gonna give me a start. I'm going to take my um, Q-tips and go ahead and blend that in. I'm really wanting to rub this into the paper, almost like staining the paper. And if you find that your oil pastel is not blending into the paper, then it might be that you need to have a little bit more coverage. It's okay to have occasionally these little white spots, but you don't want a, a lot of them because then your uh, Q-tip is having to do a lot of work in order to kind of um, blend the red from your oil pastel into those little white areas. I'm also going to come back and hit the top, where's my red, the top, that top of that, I know Wesley would tell me what that's called, that little thing that kind of like sticks up. hoping to be able to do a scribble technique on top of this, so definitely want to blend it really well with my oil, or with my uh, Q-tips. Somebody asked me what the difference was between crayons and oil pastels, and that's a really good question, because in a lot of ways they feel very similar. They have sticks that are about the same size. 
and in a lot of ways in your hand and on your paper they feel similar but oil pastel has more oil in it and the oil allows you to blend multiple colors together it also allows you to use the q-tips and smear it around and so you just end up with a much more sophisticated approach with oil pastels once you get comfortable using them they can do things you can do things with oil pastels that you just can't do with crayons because the crayons are wax based um, and they don't have that oil component i'm actually going to go ahead and take out this brown and start to focus on the areas of my car this is the right and then this is the bright but some areas are um, away from the sun and so um, I'm going to give a sense of um, the front of it is pointed away from the sun we have this really light streak here comes around here that's um, pointed right toward the sun but I'm just going to add in some dark down here at the bottom um, along the side this is that dark brown so it's going to blend really well with the uh, red and then wrapping it around the front and letting the front have some of this brown too maybe a little edge that comes up and helps to define the wheel bump over here and helps to define the front and then even with the what are where I had the red already I can kind of um, blend this brown into my red just add a little bit oh I love how that looks just uh, using the end of the q-tip and just kind of like rubbing a little bit kind of really gives that that's a light right and it kind of gives that that cool reflective quality I'm not trying to make it brown I'm not trying to really make it anything I'm just kind of giving it that kind of uh, reflective quality I really like that and blend this in Really blending that brown into the red so that it is a nice smooth gradient or ombre so that the bottom is a little bit darker and then it shades up into the red a little bit and maybe that and add a little bit Let's go ahead and get into the darks. We're going to make the windshield really dark, 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 dark. We're going to take our darkest blue. Oh, I never know which one I like. Ah, this is the one that I like. Our darkest blue and lay that in. This is a tinted windshield. And it's going to be a nice strong line over here and then bring it across and as it comes across you might even add some black add some black on the farthest front corner and just layering that black over but letting it disappear into the blue. So it goes from black to blue. And then we'll do the same thing on the um, 
side windshield window. And then cross all the way over with blue. And then picking up with black. And going just a little bit in to the blue. And you blend that from the light to dark. So we're gonna start in the blue and we're gonna blend it over. Same thing over here. I'm just going to turn my Q-tip around so that we're doing blue and black. And then maybe we need to bring a little bit of red down in between. Now let's go ahead and start looking at the tires. The tire, which is this oval, I'm going to go ahead and do that in black. And the, the tire, uh, tire tread that goes underneath. And I'm just leaving, purposefully leaving uh, a little bit of space between the round part of the tire and the underside of the tire. It's mostly for me, also for the middle. I'm just leaving a little bit of space so that I don't lose track of that because um, my drawing is helping me. Uh, and so I'm gonna do the same thing here. We'll do the underside. It looks like my tire kind of comes up over here same thing over here just going to keep a little a little space you can you can do that as well or or not it just I don't want to kind of like lose track between the side of the tire and the bottom of the tire anyway I think it's just going to help me so come in here and blend that in order for us to do the technique that I mentioned um, we have to have pretty smooth oil pastels and then I think we'll probably be able to add some uh, either oil pastel on top of it or color pencil on top of it. But you do, you do want to kind of uh, blend it into the paper so that it's not Um, sitting on top of the paper like it does when you first put it down. You want to kind of smush it, smush it into the paper. And there's actually some black on the wheel on the underside. Um, so I have some black on my Q-tip. Just put that in. Okay, let's see. Really want to make sure that it's nice and blended into my paper. So it might you might need to take a second Q-tip and just try to go over it a couple of times so that you don't have um, a lot of oil pastel. It's almost like you've tinted the paper, almost. go ahead and lay in some more darks. So the front grill is blacked out. So I'm going to go ahead and lay in the black oil pastel and blend it in. I'm leaving just a little bit of space between the black oil pastel and the red just to um, kind of help indicate uh, that that kind of chrome maybe is what it is and I'm 
And now we have this black, so we can go ahead and use it to help us um, create kind of a base, kind of a shadow line. This is just using the black that's already on my um, Q-tip. And I'm just making horizontal strokes. So horizontal because this is um, kind of indicating the, the ground plane. And I want it to look like um, it's on the ground, so rather than do vertical, I'm just doing horizontal. It's kind of like a shadow underneath that car. I really like how this sketchy approach, um, it almost looks like it's color pencil on top of oil pastel, but I tried to do that with my colored pencils and it didn't show up. I tried to use white um, or light purple or yellow and it doesn't show up on top of my black. Um, I also tried to do the same thing with oil pastels, trying to use, say, um, in order to get this look, like a yellow on top of my black. And it was kind of disappointing because it didn't work, but that's okay. As an artist, I am a problem solver. So I decided that maybe I could get away with using a paint marker. So these paint markers, this is one that's already open. The first thing that you have to do is shake it. There's a little ball inside and that's a mixing ball. And so by shaking it, then you're mixing all of the liquids so that you get a uh, good coverage. And then you open it up, and if it's brand new, then that means it needs to be primed, which means that you need to take a piece of paper and take your pen and push straight down for a couple of seconds, and then pick up, straight down, pick up, straight down, pick up and then you can see it will start flowing. The paint will start flowing. So now I'm going to see kind of if, if it's going to give me the type of look that I'm hoping for. So similar to how this tire is, it's a very sketchy approach, right? And I can just kind of add this on top and I'm Kind of purposefully being sketchy, indicating that there's this like round object in the center, which is some kind of hubcap, and these uh, strokes that are kind of coming out from the center is the wheel. Oh, I love how this is looking. I think I'm going to do this all over. Mm, this is so fun. Okay, so then you know, maybe I come under here and indicate the tire underneath. Maybe I can do it back here. Again, some sketchy lines that are coming out that kind of like show that this is a radial, so it's kind of coming out from the center. And sketchy, sketchy. Your lines don't have to be perfect, but helping to show the tire itself up under here. It's kind of neat. Okay, because so kind of similar to what they've done, maybe showing, you know, a really sketchy approach on top of this red. Sketchy, sketchy. This is almost like a scramble. A scramble is when you just add a little bit of visual texture up and over. It's almost like your original sketch. A 
that the windows have a little bit of texture on them. Use it to define the little element up front, whatever that thing is, and curve over the wheel well and again I'm keeping it really loose just indicating some of the shape of the car using that white as a visual texture visual element There's this little like icon right here so I don't know exactly what um, that what kind of car this is it doesn't really matter to me I just think it's neat you can leave it right like that or if you would like then we could put a really cool uh, background in. So the neat thing about um, this is that you can go realistic, but we're not going to. We're gonna go just really kind of um, abstract with it. First thing that we're going to do for the background is to give us um, uh, an exaggerated perspective. So this car, um, if we were to draw a line that's along the top side of the car and the bottom side of the car, it should be going kind of like this. And so we're going to make these lines that start, um, say here, and they go this direction. So they're kind of crossing over um, our paper from, from low to high, from lower to higher, kind of like, um, like a sun ray, as if this is the sun and the rays are coming off of them. Okay, I'm gonna make those a little bit darker so that you can see. So we're gonna be using oil pastel on top of it, but it's just, again, going to accentuate that uh, perspective. from light blue up here and we're just gonna do like these long streaks back. Some light blue as if maybe this is sky. And maybe maybe some green as if this, this is kind of like a car that's going, um, zooming down the, the road. Imagine that. And maybe it's a road in North Carolina and it's got some um, mountains and trees, but he's going so fast that you're just seeing streaks. And I kind of think like maybe this um, olive green would be good to get in there so that it's not quite so bright. You can really do this with any colors that you want though. The idea is just that you're laying in color and you're doing it darker up here and lighter back here. So we're gonna bring in some of this brighter blue just in the front and in the back we're going to do lighter blue these streaks and we're going to do some brighter orange up front and some lighter orange which would be my lightest orange would actually be this beigey color in the back. And maybe let's 
see we had some darker green up front, so we're gonna do some lighter green in the back. And maybe just some yellow. So again, this is not realistic, it's just it's doing two things. It's um, supporting the idea of perspective and speed, almost like everything is blurred. And then if you would like to, you can use cotton balls, or I think I'm gonna you go ahead and use um, Q-tips and start with my lightest areas first. So that very pale area. And remember that whenever you blend, if you blend um, color into color, then you know you're taking whatever colors on your Q-tip and blending it into the other colors. So like I want to keep that um, orange in there bright. So I'm just going to be careful about not having anything on my Q-tip when I do that and blend in to my blues. <laughs> so I'm not, I don't want to lose that orange, so I'm going to be careful and go around it with my Q-tip so that I feel free to change to a new Q-tip if you'd like. Maybe it's time. I think it's time. There we go. Okay, we're almost there. This is a little bit too much of oil pastel here. Kind of gummy. I don't like it when it's gummy. I know it's not sky down there, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it just kind of feels right. And maybe this becomes black down here, I don't know. Maybe I want to um, make the underside of the car dark. Where the shadow would be really dark in there. And then And then just almost done. You can really do whatever you want to do here down in the front. I'm going to lay down some blue and see how that looks. Mm, maybe I want something a little darker. Where's my darker blue? Yeah, something like that. Just really giving it a nice strong base so that it has something to kind of weight it down and balance against all of that lightness that's in the air. And right under those tires, let's make sure that they get nice and dark. And if you use different colors, for the ground and for the sky, then that's totally fine. You get to choose. Okay.
Not too bad. I hope you had a great time. Great job, guys.